kind of a different YWC football talk. It's a live on location episode. I'm here with guests from last week. Look, we're in person now. Myself, David Morris Sudi. David, how are you doing today? Doing well. I'm trying to stay warm. I'm trying to stay a little warm. It's a little chilly out here. And obviously, we're on location at the East Font for the East Final of Mont uh, Montreal against Toronto on Saturday. Excuse me. Um, what are your big keys for both sides of the ball for going into the game? Yeah, I mean, let's start with Montreal because, you know, they an impressive victory for them over Hamilton. I know that uh, that one maybe everyone expected Montreal to win, but it was, it was supposed to be a close matchup. But I think what they did well was obviously force the turnovers and capitalize on those turnovers. For Toronto, you know, they, yeah, every team makes mistakes, but, you know, they got to find a way to capitalize and keep that off the uh, hard offense off the field. And, you know, a big one is going to be using that running game. They got to find a way to keep that defense on the field if you're in Montreal. Uh, you don't want to be giving that Toronto defense extra chances to get off the field, sacks, interceptions, whatever they like to do to get off the field. They, they're a unit that struggles a little bit when they are out there for a long time and the team start to build drives on them. So if you're Montreal, that's something you're going to have to do. For Toronto, I mean, it's, it's knocking off that rust early and then getting off to a good start. It's important. Like, the last few weeks, we, they've had some slow starts here at home. They find ways to just get back into it. Montreal will, will definitely try to make sure that any slow start they have, they're going to keep their uh, try to keep that momentum from, from going to the Argos. But the Argos are also a good team at making adjustments. So they just got to make sure they keep it close, especially uh, going to the second half. They're definitely way better team in the second half, and that's going to be important for them. How much do you think crowd factor is going to play into the game on Saturday? I think you know for the defense they're gonna they're gonna feast off that off that crowd. You know on, on offense, offense doesn't really need. Yeah, they'll like get the energy from the crowd for sure. But I think offense, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see if uh, you know a lot of Montreal fans show up and try to get throw the offense off by getting a little more noisy. But I do think that for you know for Toronto they're gonna they're gonna benefit a lot from having a crowd like this. They they like the crowds they usually have even though they're not as big. So I think they're gonna really enjoy a full house, getting that energy, and they gotta build off that energy. That's the whole point of having on the field. I feel like too, like obviously we saw it again against Calgary earlier this year. Obviously the electric game, Javon Lee came when he won the turn. But that was the biggest crowd we've seen so far in 17,000. So I think an extra 8 to 10,000 or even 12,000 fans on top of that, I think it's gonna make a huge difference. Um, obviously Jack Kelly's had a huge part for this regular season success. Uh, and you've got to speak to him. Does he seem just dialed in, or what, what are the vibe you're getting from him? I'm, I'm getting that. Jack Kelly vibe with him where he's he's been business all season. Like he has been and and you know what that's that's what you need, right? He has to have that mentality of as a certain quarterback and as a leader. I think the big one for you know for Jack Kelly is you know he has he's played the great cup. That great cup experience I think will lose arms yeah. for him being in a you know in an intense environment, you know, win or go home situation. He hasn't started one in a while and I did ask him, you know, last time he it's been a while, right? Yeah. Back to his college days, where he's played at the game where all the marbles are laid down, right? So, but they've treated, I think the important one here is that they've kept that mentality each and every game. That every game has an importance, every game has a significance. Even though the last few weeks they've meant nothing to the Argos standings wise, it still means something to keep that mentality of that one and all. Not treating any game different. And I think that's, I think if they can keep that mentality, that's and ultimately, I want to ask you this: Like we have two games, this is a winner-take-all. Winner gets to go to the championship. Who do you think is going to win the game? Uh, you got to give the Argos. You know, they went 16 two for a reason. They, they they made sure to you know, let people know in the East. Though, they are the they are the crown. They are the crown jewel of the East. They are the team to beat. So I think Montreal. I think the first half is going to be a real battle. I just don't know if Montreal is going to be able to sustain and have the adjustments because. Toronto will feast on the sticks. Yes. I think that could be an issue for Montreal in this game. You know, Hamilton didn't really take advantage of uh, Montreal. Not having the greatest offensive game, right? Yes. You know, Toronto can easily put 40 points. They've done almost pretty much that this whole season, putting up 40 plus points. We haven't really seen that for Montreal too often. Can their offense go toe to toe? I just don't know if they are going to be able to. That's exactly how I feel. And quickly, I got to ask you as well. Out West, BC, Winnipeg. Who do you think is going to win, or do you think it's going to be a rematch with them? Last year's great cup, or do you think it's going to be a battle of the Golden and the Lions? I've been pinballing, I've been going back and forth, ping pong all week. 
part of me likes what I saw from BC against Winnipeg. I think they got the offense off against. Uh, I just think though Winnipeg, they got that ground game. They're going to do their best to keep, up, to keep BC's offense off the field as much as possible. And I think Vernon Adams is going to have a very different pass rush before. I'm leaning Winnipeg, but it's not a confident lean because I think BC has shown us who they're a different. They're a different team. Myself, like uh, Christine right here, I'm going BC Lions. I've had a feeling about them all year. I don't know what it is. I just, and also with Winnipeg, they haven't looked like a Winnipeg of old. So I feel like this could be a chance for them to slip, but at the same time, too, if we're seeing a rematch in Hamilton next weekend of the 2022 breakup, it wouldn't shock me at all. Wouldn't shock me. I mean, I will say this about uh, Winnipeg. They haven't looked their best, but on paper, that's one of the toughest offenses to stop BC's been having. Exactly. Well, anyway, guys, live from Beautiful Field, David Morrisuti, Drip Ortegon, thank you for listening to this very impromptu live on location YWC Football Talk. Join East and West Final, everyone.